Hello everyone, in this video we're going to show you how to make this scene with free assets and render it with AGX in Blender 4. Welcome to Blender Therapy, where 3D meets serenity. Let's get started. So first of all, we're going to head over to quicksell.com and download Bridge. Next, inside Blender, we're going to head over to the add-ons panel and then search for Megascans. Make sure that one is ticked on. Once you have downloaded Bridge, head over to whatever you need to find, like 3D assets, plants, whatever. I've already downloaded some assets for this scene, so I'm gonna head over to Local. These are the assets that we're gonna use for this scene, but feel free to choose your own to your liking depending on the scene you're building. The easiest way to get them into Blender is to head over down here and then click on Export Settings and make sure that it's set to Blender. Then you just need to click on that plus button. And the asset will appear in your open Blender file. It's that simple. And you can repeat the process for as many assets as you like. This is how we use them to build some tall building walls. Another way to use free assets is to use Blender Kit. So just make sure that you enable this in your add-ons. For example, we can look for a modular fire escape. So this is the one that we've used. So you just click on it and it will appear in your scene. You can also look for materials. Another great resource for free assets is polyhaven.com. You can either search for HDRIs, some textures and models. Ding. These are the trash cans that we've used in this scene. Next, we added a lot of cables and geopipes from free add-ons from A-Tools. Once you have that add-on enabled, you just press N and then create geo cables. You select the start point and the end point and they will appear. You can then head over to the modifiers tab and then change all the properties to modify them. And this is the same process for the geopipes. You can easily find those add-ons on Gumroad. Just name your price and then click on I want this. Next, we decided to add some fog to really add a nice effect to the scene. The process is pretty simple. You just have to create a cube and then add a material to it, which is just the principal volume plugged into the volume of the material output. You can play around with the density settings, but those values really fit the scene, so it's gonna be probably different for what you're looking for. We added a second fog, which is gonna be closer to the camera, but we also added a noise texture to it to give it some nice patterns. Next, the ground is made up of a procedural texture I've made. When you head over to the shaders tab, you will get this and you just have to click it and then press on tab to open it. This looks pretty complicated at first, but I will try to break it down for you. And it's going to be provided in the description below for free. The first chunk is a musgrave and a noise texture mixed together that goes into two color ramps in order to create a mask. Then it will go through another color ramp just to make the black and whites a little bit more contrasty for the displacement. Next, using our mask, this chunk is basically inverting the selection to uh, really separate the water and the mud. So we can select the mud color and the water color separately. This bit is for the normal and the roughness, nothing special here explained. And then you can connect everything to the principal BSDF. But the way to create this uh, node to have all these controls on your materials is to connect the values you want to control to that group input. So you'll be able to customize the values to your liking on the right panel. Then when you're inside this material, you can just press tab again to get out of it. Then we use some geometry node to scatter some debris on the ground. So first of all, we have downloaded some debris assets on Quixel Bridge. Then this is the node tree we have. So just make a distribute points on face and then an instance on points and then just drag the collection of the assets you wanna scatter. 
And don't forget to add a join geometry node at the end. Because if you don't, the plane would just disappear and you will only have the assets you scattered. And just to make things interesting, we added a random value in a separate XYZ node just to make the rotation uh, random. And then we added another node, which is the random value for uh, the scale because we don't want the debris to have all the same uh, size. We've also decided to add some rain with a free Blender rain generator, which can be found on Gumroad. The rain generator is pretty simple. You have the droplet, the rain splashes, and the rain zone, which can be modified in the modifiers tab. The easiest way to bring that into your projects is just to select all and then control C and copy objects. And then when you go to your projects, just press control V and then paste objects. The lighting of the scene was pretty simple. It's just a combination of points and area lights. The rendering settings are pretty simple. We're gonna switch the render engine to cycle and then choose GPU compute. We're gonna go at 4096 max simples. This is the light path that I've chosen and make sure the transparent is set to 32 because we have water and volumes. We're gonna set the step rate render for the volumes to 0.25. So this is gonna take longer to render, but this is gonna add up a more realism. And then we're gonna change our view transform from filmic to AGX. AGX is the new color space that comes with Blender 4 and it's awesome. Like you see on this picture, on the right is Filmic. And to make things simple, Filmic collapses all colors into six before attenuating to white. So long story short, AGX doesn't and looks way better. That's it for the rendering setup for a still image. We've also made a quick animation for the camera. Open up the timeline tab, select the camera and then press N and then where you see location, press I. This will create a keyframe. In order to animate it, just create another keyframe by moving the camera and then heading over to location again and then pressing I again. This will create the second keyframe. To render our animation, we can head over to the output properties and then set the resolution you want. We're gonna set the frame rate to 24 and you can select the frame range of your animation. Ours start at one and ends at 144. And we're also going to choose Open EXR as our file format. And you are now ready to render. So thanks a lot for tuning in today for this quick video tutorial. And like you hear in every video, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel for more content. Until then, happy blending and may the pixels be ever in your favor.